you know, there's a perception that data is expensive, but often I, <laughs> people say this, I say to them, you know, have you looked at the price of data in some of the developed countries? Uh, and actually, you, you can try it yourself. You go online and see how much it will cost you for data in, um, in the United States or in Europe. Uh, so against international standards, it's not expensive. It's also pretty fast. You know, we had Jack Ma was in town a month or so ago. And uh, one of the things he said to me, he says, I was really impressed. I don't know why he felt the need to do a speed test on the way from the airport, but he says, I did a speed test because my guys told me that uh, the data is, the internet is fast here, but I was like, wow. Uh, because actually, if you got 4G plus, you know, you're getting 55, 65 Mbps. Now, therein lies the problem. Because if you're downloading a document or a, a, a movie, or even social media, you know, you, it'll be downloaded in, in, uh, in HD in a super fast time. And so if you compare it to other, other networks, of course, the, the, the data bundle will get used faster because it's more of a fire hydrant compared to a, a tap. And you know, e even on our networks in some parts, you still only have 2G or 3G. And if you're downloading 2G versus, or even 3G versus 4G, it's much faster. We've also had some issues around um, people using, you know, going out of bundle. And, and that has been a real, big, a real big problem because you've got a bundle, you come to the end of the bundle, and suddenly you move into this out-of-bundle pricing, which usually is, is quite a bit higher than the in-bundle. So we've been really encouraging customers to get, to get into bundle or to get back into bundle as you get close to the expiry. Trying to hit that balance has been a bit of a problem because customers says, you know, stop sending me messages. Um, so you, you, know, you, you, can't, you can't get it right. We've also introduced a thing called My Data Manager. So you can choose, you can say, when my bundle runs out, just drop my internet session. And it you know, puts the, the power back into you. Because some people say, I'd rather drop the internet session than go out of bundle. And of course, when, you, when you're roaming, I mean, that's a whole different story. And you know, even as an industry, if I can speak on behalf of the industry, there can be no excuse. You know, and I know I get into trouble for saying this, but there can be no excuse for the kind of charges that mobile phone companies around the world charges for uh, data roaming. It's, it's, it's shocking. And we need to get on top of that. Uh, your sort of revenue streams have been shifting over the last five years. Uh, how do you see that uh, panning out in the next two, three years? Uh, you've seen a lot of uh, uh, VVAS uh, sort of going up. Uh, calls and uh, SMS have been sort of flattening uh, sort of bit. So what, what do you see in the coming months? in the coming years? Well, well we see that trend um, continuing. So uh, voice will take a, a decreasing share, but this is mainly really because the other sides are growing. So data growth has been in the high 20s. M-Pesos has been in the 20s. Actually, this last year, for the first time, uh, SMS declined year on year, uh, which is a little bit delayed compared to many other operators. Um, so, you know, we're seeing a decline or a flattening on SMS, and of course, you know, we, we expected it to happen because of things like WhatsApp. Uh, but we still have a big SMS market, particularly coming out of gaming and particularly coming out of a lot of the PRSPs. And of course, if you, if you bank, if you do telephone banking, every time you do a transaction, you know, an SMS comes to you. So that business will, will sustain for a while. But we will continue to see growth on, uh, on M-Pesa and, um, and on data. Then we've got some longer term investments we're making now. So when you look at, now we're starting to report fixed data separately. And fixed data is the fact that we're now connecting homes. And we've passed, I think, about eight to 3,000 homes so far. Um, and as we pass more homes and we connect more homes, you're going to see a new revenue stream coming through from that market that are really looking for the always on kind of approach. And you know, many, many people say to me, so you know, why don't you just do unlimited data? Well, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is because it's, uh, it's uneconomic. You know, you, we, we can't afford to do that. It, it's, it'll be loss-making. And people who've done you know, unlimited data in the past, they've gone out of business. And the ones who will continue to do it, they will go out of business. So I mean, that doesn't make any sense for us. So we need to find you a different solution. So your kids at home can access the internet. They can access you know, TV, Netflix, whatever, who perhaps shouldn't access it quite as much as they do. But, um, Without, without the worry. 
Uh, and of course, once you get to the connected home, you know, I mentioned a few moments ago that you know, I, I have uh, um, uh, an Amazon Echo here. And that's the first part of the connected home. So this Echo you know, will do lots of, lots of things. Um, it listens to my voice. It will turn the TV on. It will play me a radio station. It will order goods for me. I mean, it doesn't do that in Kenya yet. But you know, the connected home requires internet connections to the home. And that's not going to come via 3G or 4G. 